is that, you know, in the beginning, most men collect a lot of red flags as opposed to collecting a lot of intel and detail about the woman. And sort of like, you will look past those red flags because they're like, ah, I can work through it. Oh, uh, the women, most men love becomes his weakness. Yeah, I, li- I like what Kelly just ended with. Uh, most men at first are attracted to love the wrong woman because they haven't really understood who they are and what their what is that attraction really look like. Is that true attraction or is it lust? And sometimes we tend to kind of conflate, you know, the lustful attraction with the romantic attraction. And, um, and in some cases, I, I kind of sit back and ask myself, like, who is really most women? Who is really the type of women most men want? Right. And is it sometimes what we see within our own immediate circle or is it something that's always portrayed or marketed to us like this is the vixen this is the the model the, the this sort of archetype of woman right in sort of i i find that most men instinctively like kind of revert back to the type of women that he's grown up around you know like the, the certain characteristics that the mom has or certain family members have right um i i think that those tend to be much more of the women that men t- kind of gravitate towards in the end, I think at first glance, it's always sort of the the lustful, the eyeful um, eye candy, as opposed to the one that really fits your heart and also is attached to your mind. Um, I think far too often the the idea of long term, you know, long term attention for for short term retention sometimes gets missed because those types of men want those women, but sometimes they don't even understand that they want them for all the wrong reasons and they're not really going to fulfill them in the long term. So, yeah, I I think separating the two and understanding that perspective kind of gives, brings everything a little bit more home. All right. Let me go ahead and go to Fantasy Island, girl. What are your thoughts about it? The woman most men love becomes his weakness. So I wrote a couple of things down. Uh, so she shouldn't have to, she won't, she wouldn't have the opportunity to be somebody's weakness if they weren't in love with her um, outside of somebody being extremely malicious and attacking them, you know? So with that in mind, it makes sense that she would be the one that would be their biggest weakness, the one that they love the most. And I wanted to touch on what Kelly was saying when she was saying, They always choose the bad girl over the good girl, basically. And I think excitement does matter in these situations. Like the first thing a man looks for, like the first thing that catches a man's attention is your looks most of the time. So we can't really say that he's looking for the 20% that he's lacking when the first thing they do is notice the looks, he's not going to notice you. So he's not going to know that you're that wonderful because he didn't notice you initially. That's just what I'm, that's just where my mind immediately went, but I may be completely off, but that's where I went. All right. Brother Hink, the women most men love becomes his weakness. What are your thoughts about it, sir? I, I agree with Joy on that last part. She said that her mind is completely off. I agree with that. So shout out to you, Joy. Um, Don't start this shit. Hink. So when we say women, no. <laughs> yeah, they we do. We do. We we'll choose uh a, a nice uh juicy ass, maybe juicy breasts. We'll choose her looks. What? Uh pretty smile. We, we, we'll choose that. And and then we'll think we're in love with her. Her personality's all right with us. But we see the red flags and we just totally ignore them because we're hammered by her beauty and, and we're getting mad compliments or mad looks coming our way because of the attention that she brings. You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden we are in different circles because of her. But all the while, you ignore them red flags and they start to build up and they really start to show when uh you know you, you you've been with her for a little while and, and you probably should have left her ass at the goddamn restaurant, but you chose to continue to roll with her. And uh and unfortunately we suffer. You know, it may take about four or five years down the road before we start to realize, but then we suffer. 
So I, I, I tell men all the time, man, don't, don't don't just go by a woman's look, man. If she can't hold a conversation, why are you dealing with a heifer? If she if she's if she, you at a restaurant and she's arguing about the order being wrong or mistaken, and it's not even her order, it's not even her food, but it's your food, and she's fighting, ready to you know step outside. Yeah, leave her right then and there. Huh. It didn't have nothing to do with this heifer. Please, guys, pay attention to the red flags that you are seeing. Please don't ignore them because it's going to cost you in the end. And and, and that uh, that orgasm she gave you, it's not worth it. Get your damn bottle of jerkies and give your own self a good orgasm. Then deal with them goddamn headaches Then this heifer's going to bring to you. Well, it, it, what, it, what, it's ten, what it's tend to seem, I think, is that, you know, in the beginning, most men collect a lot of red flags as opposed to collecting a lot of intel and detail about the woman in sort of like you will look past those red flags because they're like ah i can work through it oh like we could we could talk about that ah that doesn't really matter too much but i think after a while you'll find yourself with a stack of red flags holding it and wondering to yourself how the hell did i get to this point Lou, the I'm only, only, only two, there's only Why two you things. Guys always hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, Joy. Joy, me and talk. Mike, Mike, Mike. Let these men talk, Joy. Sit back and listen. The only two things a man should get a fixer up of is a house and a car. The hell would it get a fixer up a woman? I'm not fixing a woman up for shit. You better be ready made when you come his way. You got to be ready made. I'm not fixing shit. You better get yourself together before you come in my presence and I'm gonna bless you with my last name. Fantasy Island. It's not it's not no. that men associate red flags with pretty women. It's that we understand that women are not a monolith, right? Women are not a monolith, and we fully understand that. But unfortunately, I think that some people get themselves oh, you know, get their head way too far into the clouds and they start to ignore their intuition and start to ignore their gut and being like, look, that's a non-negotiable for me or yeah, that's a red flag. But it's not because they're attractive. It's just that, you know, at, in the beginning, we, we are very much attracted and then then we try to filter out. You ever seen a guy who has like that, like that woman who's bad in every way and then he's trying to change her like you know dress this way do this less and stuff like that you already knew what you were signing up for you know what i'm saying it, it, it the, the details said you know everything included including whatever her, her personality and attitude was you know and then they tend to have buyer's remorse and trying to change and implement and say input like all these restrictions you should have had that from the beginning if you if you say you don't like disrespectful women, you got to be like, hey, look, you can do and say whatever you want, but I personally don't date women who are disrespectful. I don't date women who move this particular type of way. And you let that be known. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Place your boundaries. Like I said, I, it was a different show. You have to place your boundaries and you have to let women know our boundaries because if nobody's given us, us boundaries, we don't have any. We don't know what what yours are. So my man, like I said before, this is the first time I've had somebody give me boundaries and I love it. Like I'm quick to be like, oh, yes, sir. Okay. I'm fine with that. Okay. But, or even if it's yeah, something but I really want to do, I'm like, oh, but it's still the excitement of like, oh, he doesn't want me to do this. He's actually giving me this challenge of, of fulfilling this requirement. I could do this. I want to show him. And I think it's better than me just being able to do la la la, whatever I want. And think it's going to be fine. But see, that's a problem. Some, some of us men didn't, wouldn't really talk, wouldn't educate it, wouldn't, didn't learn from an elder man. Unfortunately, we, we either was hard headed, didn't want to pay attention. OG, you don't know what you're talking about. Are you just being extra? You're just saying it because you had to deal with it. Hey, man, that OG's probably telling you shit he he went through, not only went through, but he done seen and lived. But yet, a lot of these young cats he not listen to it, so they got to live and learn themselves. So be it. So be it. If that's what it takes for them to take that that L, then, then take that L. But a guy will look past them red flags because of your, your your beauty. He will look at your beauty alone and look past that you're argumentative. He will look at your beauty alone and look past that you can't cook a goddamn meal. You can't boil water. He will look past that. And that's just unfortunate, but that's how we do sometimes. 